There really has been massive advancement in drones, uh, especially in the agricultural space. Like this drone behind me right now, uh, it has a, a payload or lift of uh, around 40 kilos and um, now this is a very, very serious drone that can really help farms in, and uh, farmers in agriculture. I'm actually a farmer myself and um, one of the things that I've got in running three particular properties is that I'm really time poor as well as running other businesses. We've got um, a very undulating property and there's a spot there where we get a particular weed called Patterson's Curse. To get a quad bike in there or a tractor to actually spray that area uh, is very, very dangerous. From a safety perspective, there's obviously been a huge push in quad bike safety and tractor safety in the last little while. And drones can actually take over from a quad bike, for instance, in many, many ways to actually look at crops, look at grass, um, but also spray in certain areas. Drones is something that can um, be automated. You can put a flight path on them. Uh, you can go out and you can monitor fences. With a drone like this, you can actually lift um, you know, particular fence posts to a certain point. Um, you can actually spray with this drone, like you could lick 40 kilos of, of liquid. 40 litres on something like this could wipe out that whole Patterson's Curse area um, with complete safety. It really, really can decrease oh and issues on a farm. A drone like this did not exist two years ago. This is a, a really major tool for the agricultural industry. To shoot a drone out and to actually have a GPS coordinate of my whole property and actually run the fence line, that saves me huge amounts of time. Not only can it carry a camera, but it could actually carry tools and that type of thing out to somebody to actually fix a particular thing on a farm. Every farmer will agree with me that um, lifting hay and picking up hay bales is, is just a horrible job. A bale can be lifted with this particular drone. As we've seen a lot of natural disasters over the years, especially in Queensland, land where you see stock stuck on a high point of land, you could particularly drop a feed bag out or a, or a bale of hay out to that, that particular area and instead of losing a whole heap of cattle uh, or sheep or, or just livestock in particular, you could save $30,000, $50,000 in stock just by being able to get a bit of feed out to a remote spot. This particular drone uh, has actually been put together by a gentleman by the name of Ken King who uh, has actually developed this in Melbourne and um, uh, you know, there, there really isn't anything like this anywhere else in the world that actually exists that can lift a payload like this at this point in time. So yes, 100% uh, Australia is really leading this, uh, this space. The Civil Aviation Safety Authority in Australia is really leading the way across the world in using drones in agriculture. It's a really good idea to get in contact with them to make sure that your farming application for drones is, is definitely something that's legal. At the moment the laws state that if you are actually a farmer and you're operating this on your own property, uh, under 25 kilos, you don't need licensing. I think it's a very good idea to make sure that you actually do go and do a course in actually flying drones. There are many, many places out there that will actually uh, give you a, a license once you do a, a five-day course. A drone like this, um, it's, it's a complex device and you've got to treat them with quite a fair bit of um, safety, but also too making sure that uh, it is flight worthy. It's a, probably a very good idea to make sure that if you get something from the manufacturer, you take it back quite often and make sure that it is, it is fully maintained as well. An aircraft like this, it's, it's okay to have a license, but if it's not going to fly and fly safely uh, and it does fail, um, you know, it, it could be uh, anything from uh, just a small incident to something uh, catastrophic. So I really think that um, uh, you know, an MRO uh, is, is definitely going to happen uh, down the track. This has some extremely high-tech devices. There are GPS systems, there are large brushless motors. The, the batteries on these drones can start a car uh, plus more. So you really, really need to think about what you're actually playing with there. So I do see regulation coming in at some point uh, from the aviation governing bodies where um, a maintenance schedule will have to happen uh, on heavy lift drones. We're really excited to be at the Avalon 2019 Air Show at the Drone Zone where you can actually come along and see these particular devices flying uh, and, um, and showing how heavy lift capabilities are with drones.